What's going on, guys? Brian Jackson, Men's Comics, and here we are again, like we do every week, talking about those trends that are going on in the comic book community. That's right. This is that three up, three down. Jack, how's your week so far? Great, great. We just did an amazing interview for the brand new uh, episode of the Simple Men's Comics and Friends podcast with uh, Boom Studios CEO Ross Ritchie. So that was exciting. I'm definitely still on like a comic high from that. Excited to talk about the moving and shaking going on in the comic book market. And again, we've got three up and three down to talk about this week and uh, some more abstract stuff to talk about within the hobby. Yeah, so that Ross Ritchie interview we just we just got done recording. That will be on the channel later this week. We also want to remind you that that'll be available on the audio podcast. It'll be long form content. We're going to cut it up for you and more digestible on YouTube. But if you want that full long term interview, make sure you subscribe to us wherever your podcasts are found. That is the Simple Man's Comics podcast. But let's get into the three up, starting with Image and Department of Truth. A lot of rumors swirling uh, around Department of Truth, uh, specifically coming from the Key Collector Comics app, which exclusively put out, um, I have to call it a rumor because we don't, other than the Key Collector Comics putting it out there, we, that's what all we have. But they have reports uh, coming in that Department of Truth was the subject of a bidding war and has been optioned for a major film with a major star attached or a film or TV. And this has been enough to really send that book flying. We've seen all the cover price copies selling out. Uh, the People are starting to try to ask at upwards of $20 um, for cover a we're starting to see the incentives continue to creep up it's very interesting that like the one in 100 is so far over ratio the one in 50 is well under ratio and that's Merca and Dolfo. so that there's i think there's room to grow with that one uh the one in 10 declan shelby has been completely ignored the in hyuk lee actually does pretty well and goes for ratio so um i, I certainly think that the big name artists have a lot to do with it but I would pay attention to those one in fifties and one in tens as kind of like some low hanging fruit, uh, as well as a lot of exclusives that are selling out. We sold out of our department of truth exclusive. Uh, I think that this is going to be a big time, big time book. Did a, what, like 150,000 copies for this book. Uh, um, was the diamond number reported huge number, uh, but certainly one that we're seeing dry up already. Yeah. And we're only what, two issues in right so but the next one i want to talk about this one's always kind of been up for a while we've been talking about i mean within the past year especially but we're seeing star wars up but that's no doubt we got mandalorian season two first two episodes of that new season have been fire but it's not just mando related books we're seeing star wars across the board kind of catching that residual heat as well that's right and and the reason why we really have to talk about it this week is we're seeing an expansion of what within Star Wars is hot. Um, when you and I, we, we did a video specifically on Star Wars, almost probably, it feels like almost a year ago. Um, and we talked about back then that there, there was no heat in the Star Wars market. Um, and we talked about the, the crazy affordability of a lot of these characters. And since then, it's been insane. Not only are you seeing major characters tied to speculation for television and film, but you're also seeing like people trying to get way ahead of the future uh, and look in, in all of that Dark Horse stuff. If there's a first appearance attached to it, it's selling. Um, but where we're seeing the transition, that Dark Horse stuff has been going on now for a few months, uh, really throughout the summertime. And now we're seeing the Marvel series get attacked and we're seeing the reader buzz and the, these first appearances, they're coming out and then jumping out to $15, $20 within just a couple of months. A couple months of release and these books are $20 or more. We're starting to see second prints and third prints start to really dry up of random issues. Uh, and um, we're starting to see books like Dr. Afra, which was really a dead in the water book. First appearance always been in demand. The, the actual ongoing was kind of a DOA title, just really overprinted. Everybody went for the, uh, the um, exclusives. Incentives were well under ratio. Now that is starting to get in demand. And we're starting to see some of those issues sell above cover price. Vader, his series specifically, has had a lot of interest. So yeah, Mando, I think, has gotten everybody just back in the mood for Star Wars. But they man, brought Star the magic Wars back to Star Wars franchise. Really has. And, and Star Wars has been hot for about a year now. And really, if you look at the comics market right now, it does my heart good. 
Um, and I know it probably makes you feel good to sit here and look and go, if you're to ask, honestly, what are the two hottest properties in comic right now? It's Star Wars and Ninja Turtles. Yeah, and speaking of those, because we talk about nostalgia on here, me especially, everyone knows I love the 80s. We're, we're seeing those 80s properties on the upward trend as well. Yes, that's right. So I really kind of cheated here because I almost wanted to say Ninja Turtles. But we talked about that. We've talked about that several weeks. So I'm going to touch on the fact that Ninja Turtles, he is expanding much like we just talked about Star Wars. Uh, the ongoing really got everyone back excited last road. And now people are jumping into the Mirage series. Late Prince and the Mirage series are selling out. Issue 7, which has the origin of the Turtles. Also, first appearance of the Ooze, not to be slept on as a first appearance. Um, that issue is taking off. We're starting to see the first appearance of Casey Jones take off. All of these issues, by the way, all of these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles keys were featured on our buy list prior to them ever taking off. So make sure you're watching those top 10 buy list shows because we've been talking Ninja Turtles for as long as Brian and I have been together uh, talking comics. But beyond the Ninja Turtles, that heat has gotten people really um, excited about a feeling that Brian and I have had in the market for a long time. And look, I could take this a couple different routes, right? I could start bragging about how Brian and I really felt like this was going to be a move and, and now it's coming to fruition. But in reality, I just really want to educate our, our um, audience on why this was something that Brian and I were so excited about was because it's, it's kind of how Brian mentioned, you hit a certain age, you, you get money and you start kind of wanting to buy your childhood back. And nostalgia really drives your, your purchasing decisions, especially when we're talking personal collection. We're not talking about what you're buying to resell or anything else. And then once you know what makes you buy things for your personal collection, you get a good idea of what is driving other well, people. And also those things start getting stuck in people's personal collections. So they're not out there as much. Drying up which is what you see with properties um, in the 80s. Uh, it's, we're seeing a lot, of, a lot of these things. So Ninja Turtles got red hot. And because it's so hot, anyone who a year ago, when you and I were saying Ninja Turtles is going to have a renaissance, they would, so a lot of people would have told us it was impossible because they didn't think not that Ninja Turtles couldn't be as popular as it is today, but that that type of property couldn't be as popular as it is today. And once Turtles broke down that mold, now people are starting to say, well, wait a minute. What about G.I. Joe? What about Transformers? What about Masters of the Universe? What about Thundercats? What about properties that are also starting to get optioned that you may not think about, like Predator or uh, Robocop? And these, all of these properties are starting puppies. <laughs> you're starting to see first appearances um, gain traction in the comic book market. Um, even some of the more off the wall first appearances like Captain Planet and things like that. People are looking and saying, well, okay, well, this transition is going to continue to happen. And you're going to see it transition into the 90s because you're going to start to see those things where we talk about the Captain Planet, the Simpsons. You're going to start to see that continue, that trend continue as uh, we kind of age up and the children of the 90s are now hitting that mid 30s early 40s where you've got you know extra money and you've got that buying power so that's something to pay attention to the heat is on right now these books have dominated any of these websites or apps top 10 top 20 list your favorite youtubers have been talking about it certainly we've been talking about it far before it got hot we were getting laughed at but we're always going to be talking about it because it's something that we have really believed in and glad to see it finally starting to get its due. Um, I know there's probably some collectors out there who slept on it who are mad that some of these prices are going up because I know there's a few GI Joe keys I still don't have high grade yet that I don't like the way some of the prices are starting to creep up. But uh, uh, I know you're probably glad you already got your Masters of the Universe set all put together. Yeah, but then it expands because then they're like, okay, I got that Marvel star, all nine eights, but what am I going to get now? And they start going after image, start going after them, the creations. Right. But um, the He-Man.org ones, that's a hard set to get. But yeah, no doubt 80s properties, I, I love seeing them. Um, like you said, bittersweet because I love seeing them get up in the community, but then, then it makes it harder to buy stuff. But either way, we're going to transition over to those downward trends for this week. And here's one that is up, down, all around, but it's down right now when we are talking Deadpool. Yeah, and I'm probably going to catch some heat for this. There's some Deadpool diehards. Every time we talk Deadpool, seem to give us shit. But here's the reality. 
Um, a couple of years ago, not that long ago, you couldn't buy a Deadpool back issue in any sort of bin. And I, and I don't care if, if it was in a first appearance or there wasn't a major reader buzz, just every Deadpool issue seemed to sell out on the shelf. And if they were in back issue bins, they were in back issue bins for above cover price. You know, you were seeing five, six, seven, eight dollar prices. That Ryan Reynolds craze going. Right. And now uh, we've been seeing these daily sales from Midtown Comics. It's something that really struck me. Um, the other day they did a 99 cent sale. And when they do that, they're mostly clearing out titles that they have a lot of that don't sell well. You usually see the same titles, action comics, detective comics, which are great series, but don't sell as well as Batman. Um, Superman usually makes that list. And then you'll see your small characters like uh, Hawkman and, and things like that. Yeah, Mosaic was on there. Uh, uh, I, w- I, went through, I went through like 79 pages of data to come to this conclusion. But the one that shocked me was Deadpool. Everything Deadpool was on there. Regular price variants, uh, you know, the legacy books, um, 99 cents. Um, and that is never something I've seen before. Um, and I easily could have put Harley Quinn in this spot because there was some Harley in there as well, um, which also kind of was really uh, a far cry from what you would have seen five years ago. But uh, the Deadpool thing was really striking. I think it's temporary. I think uh, you mentioned Ryan Reynolds. I think that's what a lot of this is tied up in. Um, Deadpool's fandom comes from those who are not true comic readers. Most of them are kind of into the whole lore of Deadpool. And since Deadpool's kind of quietly gone away for a few years, We've had to kind of put them in our toy box and, and, and close the lid and, and haven't really gotten the full um, glory of Deadpool in the last few years. And that's why people have given us crap. Brian and I have really kind of hoped for a, a more of a reader buzz Deadpool series, a series that maybe is aimed at a more serious audience because we already know that movie audience isn't there. So maybe write a story for us that we want to read. Um, but Nonetheless, Deadpool's down, but I can't help but looking at those 99 cent books, Brian, and think maybe this won't last, and those 99 cent books could be great, great buying opportunities. And either way, if you're a Deadpool collector, it's similar to the opposite of what we just talked about the 80s. You get a rare opportunity now to fill in some of your runs cheaper than you ever could, and that's something new for a Deadpool collector because you had never had that opportunity before. Yeah, especially with some of those... um homage or cover swipes and some of those Deadpool yeah. ones that usually get a lot of people's attention. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see like a Marvel Max Deadpool. Yeah, Marvel needs a black label. Yep. But the next one we're talking about, we're sticking with Marvel and this is definitely down, but I haven't seen this as much lately and that's those Marvel qualifier variants. <laughs> you have to order so many copies of another title to get this book. Yeah, so they don't make them anymore. And they're down-ish. I don't really want to say that they're down because there's a few that are red hot. Um, But that's why we're talking about it. Um, They're down because they're looked at the same as cover Bs that are released today, which are open order. You mentioned how the process of getting these qualified variants. You had to qualify in some way just to order the variant. And then if you did then you could open order. And the qualifiers were ridiculous. Some of them were just out of this world, uh, made no sense. You had to order 100% of X-Force number six. And, 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 (laughs) you know, it's just some random book. And um, one that comes to mind that's hot right now is Champions number one, the Mark Brooks variant, beautiful cover. Regular price variant was once on the Midtown 99 cent sale, but is now an absolute ghost and is is really probably a hundred to $150 book or more in the market right now. I, I've heard people say, uh, and a shout out to the people who really brought this book to light, which would be the Mighty Mel V uh, YouTube channel and the Drunken Chat with the, their segment, The Raw Report with Ultra Maximus, that they really highlighted that this book probably has less copies out there than the one in 1,000 because the one in 1,000, anyone who did a store exclusive got three copies of. In order to qualify for this book, you had to order 200% of all new, all different Avengers number nine. Now that sounds like, well, that's easy. This is a number one. 
all new, all different Avengers number nine, you may remember, is the first appearance of the new Wasp. So that was a first appearance we all saw coming. She was on the cover. So that was a heavily ordered book. So this is what Marvel would do to retailers. They would stick you with a requirement that you had to order double what you ordered for a heavily ordered book in order to just order one or more of these Mark Brooks. Most didn't qualify and most didn't care. So the only people who really got this book are large retailers um, and the, your Midtown Comics, your My Comic Shops. And they've long since sold out and the book is in collections and, the, and it's dried up. But that is just one example of probably dozens of books like that, Brian, that are really just ghosts that people don't realize. Um, and at the time, we don't even know to look for them now because they were dollar bin books. Yeah, and it was a pain in the ass as, as just a comic book reader or a comic book collector because I'd go to my local comic book shop and they usually carry a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to Marvel books. And you would just think, well, they're going to have it. And you go in there on new comic book day and you're like, hey, I'm looking for this brand. And then they'd be like, yeah, we didn't get any of those because you'd have to order so many copies of right. this other one that we didn't do. So we weren't able to get this one. And it was just nuts because just like you said, the requirement was would be strange it would be like some like off-brand other title other issue to get and it, it just drove people nuts and i don't know too many people readers or retailers alike that were happy with that right so i would love to see one of these online resources whether or not um the drunken chat wants to go into it in more detail whether it's key collector or comic book invest one of these uh cover price one of these resources to go in more depth about all of these qualifier variants because i think that there's a lot of opportunity there with a lot of books that are probably really cheap but wouldn't be cheap if people realized how kind of not available on the mass market they are as soon as people found out about this champion's book all cheap copies that were available dried up and then i monitored this book for two weeks while nobody put a single copy on eBay, even though it was posted on Instagram, that tells you something. That really is a rarity. Um, so I think that that is something that can apply to so many of these qualifier variants. So shout out to the, to the folks at the Drunken Chat, uh, Mel, Mighty Mel, the YouTube channel, for thinking outside the box with that one. Um, definitely something to pay attention to because, yeah, you're right, Brian. Those books were a pain in the ass for collectors. They were a pain in the ass for retailers. Um, but they could be profit now. Right. Which that's going to get us to the last downward trend this week now we know there's a process of attrition we know the comic book industry from behind the scenes from the creator standpoint you know it ebbs and flows all the time but right now what's down is we have dc that's actually losing writers to image comics yeah and it's definitely on um, a process this to me it really harkens back to that kind of manifesto that robert kirkman put out all those years where he said for the game to work well you should come in you should make your name for yourself at marvel or dc and once you've made your name writing their characters and telling their stories, um, then you should take that name to a creator-owned uh, publisher, whether it's, you know, Image Comics or, or Boom Studios or IDW or Aftershock, Omnipress, or any of the other great publishers that exist out there. Um, and you can then sell your own books and your own characters and your own stories. Um, and sometimes it works that way. And sometimes it works in the reverse where we see people kind of make their name um, in the world of creator owned. And you and I talk about books like Canto. Yeah. I love David Boer's writing. You can't tell me David Boer couldn't write a Marvel or DC book and write it well. Um, so, yeah, you see, you'll sometimes see that transition. But there are two major names. Um, and we are talking about, of course, uh, Scott Snyder and Jeff Johns who are moving to Image Comics to start their own imprints. Um, neither have closed the door on ever working or writing for, for DC again. Scott Snyder has, has more concretely said that he thinks he will do some projects with DC in the future, but they're really going to focus on their creator-owned titles. And the Jeff Johns imprint, interestingly enough, was originally supposed to be a DC Comics imprint under Vertigo. Um, but there are some rumors recently that that's no longer in the project in the, in the works and it's actually through image comics. Um, and I think that these are two major creators who have done so much for DC 
uh, and will be immediately in demand in, in the world of creator owned comics. But the interesting thing is, is the power vacuum. Who is going to now fill that void for DC? James Tynan has definitely stepped up and shown that he's capable of stepping in and filling Scott Snyder's uh, shoes. And I think that's what we're missing is who is going to be the guy who's going to take that Jeff Johns role? Who's going to be uh, that they, they need? You got to have two, three, four big artists or writers. Um, I certainly think Tom Taylor is a guy with the potential. He's done an amazing job with Suicide Squad. And I still think that there's more he could be doing. I think he could be Justice League. I think he could do a great Superman. I think he could do anything. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis, what, what are their plans for him? Is he going to still stay within his corner or will he expand out? But uh, certainly, I think if you're DC Comics, you expected this at some point. Um, but I think that it's going to cause a shift in the market because it, as they become successful, I do think there is going to come a day where, uh, you know, Donny Cates may, may move from big two to just doing uh, creator owned and things like that. Um, I, I do you think that advocates imprint. Right. I do. That he could probably do it right now if he wanted to. I just think he's having too much fun writing Venom and Thor. But, um, you know, he certainly has the name recognition uh, to do it immediately. Right. So there's three up, three down this week. Like we mentioned at the beginning of this video, stay tuned on this channel. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. That way you'll be notified when that Ross Ritchie interview hits this channel. There's some great information in there. Also within that video, we have a little bit of giveaway, right? Yeah, we do. We have a giveaway for an exclusive. We've talked about our Bolo boxes um, where we uh, do mystery boxes with exclusive variants uh, from ourselves that we produce as well as other retailers. But we are going to be doing an exclusive Boom Studios mystery box where you're going to get four Simpleman's Comics exclusive variants by Boom Studios. Uh, and all you got to do is participate in the little giveaway put a little comment, subscribe to the channel, and you are in. So make sure you guys are watching that video, uh, $100 value on that giveaway. Um, and there's beyond that, if you speculate, if you collect, there are there's so much information in that. It really reminds me of that original interview we did with Arun, where if you watch that Arun video, you could have made yourself hundreds to thousands of dollars. Um, and I think it's the same way with this Ross interview. Yes. I will tell you this, in that Ross Ritchie interview, he spends about 30 seconds of just telling you everything that Boom has optioned right now. Yes, yes, he will leave almost no stone unturned. But with that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.